Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna take a look at a SolidWorks sheet metal tutorial on this model here. This model comes from the Too Tall Toby Practice Models playlist on the YouTube channel, and it's this one here, the SM Riser Pad. So let's take a look at this drawing here, and that way we can get the clock started. There were a number of people who were asking down in the comments about my thoughts on this model. One of these questions here um, from Davinder Kumar. He says, I was unable to pattern the jog. Is there any other way of making a separate jog in each solid works? I was able to do a mirror body as well and then ended up doing all the jogs separately. Now, this is a great question and it also kind of ties into a previous video that I made on sheet metal. I'll include a link to, to that video up there in the corner. Uh, but uh, the uh, video that I made before before, kind of showed a workaround on how to do this jog in SolidWorks and how to do it using global variables to kind of keep them all linked together. But then I saw a comment, I think it was in the Discord, uh, talking about how maybe a different way of doing this would be to create each jog as a sheet metal base flange. And I thought that was a really, really clever way to do it. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. And so Davinder, I am going to show you that we actually can pattern the jog, but only if we don't do it as a jog. So we'll do it a different way. And then we will be able to create a pattern of that jog in the end of this model. Now, this is a sheet metal tutorial. And so if you're out there and you're interested in learning more about sheet metal, I just want to remind you that down in the description, I've got a link to an upcoming sheet metal training class that I'm doing. So if you're a SolidWorks user and you've ever been interested in learning about sheet metal and you want to spend two days working with me, a certified SolidWorks expert, and I can tell you all the answers to all of your questions about the wonderful world of sheet metal, well, that would be a great class to sign up for. And I've got all the info down below in the description. All right, let's hit play here and get started with this channel, this challenge. And so when it comes to doing these kinds of challenges, whoops, went a little bit big there. When it comes to doing these kinds of challenges, I always try to encourage my students to start out with a game plan. Now, in the case of sheet metal, what that game plan consists of is trying to identify two or more lines that can be extruded as a base flange. And what you'll learn over time using SolidWorks sheet metal is that if you can find two lines, like this vertical, uh, this vertical back end here, which is at a height of 33, this vertical end here, that could be one of the lines. And then the second line would be this horizontal line kind of coming all the way out to the front. If you can find two lines like that, two lines or more, and then extrude that as a base flange, you're gonna set yourself up for success in sheet metal. There's certainly more than one way to create this model, but I always try to encourage my students to kind of come up with methodologies or game plans. And the game plan for sheet metal is look for two or more lines that you can kind of thin feature extrude. So in the case of this model, I'm going to take those two lines. I'm going to thin feature extrude them out to this depth here. I'll probably just do half of the model. And so after I, after I create that, I'll have a shape that'll look kind of like this. It'll be square up front here and it'll be too short. And then what I'll do is from the top plane, I'll create the, the missing geometry. So from the top plane, what I'll do is I'll create a line that comes over here like this, a line that comes down. I'll create this radius here with a, a value of radius 19. Come back this way. I'll create this radius here with a value of radius six and then I'll, I'll back up and go all the way up to this end and then we can use a command called sheet metal tab sheet metal base flange tab to create that geometry and so once i've got that geometry all in place i can do a mirror all mirror everything across and then i could punch this big hole through here diameter 160 to punch that hole through there now once i've got all that geometry in place then i'm going to be able to approach the jog and i think what i'm going to do with the jog here is i'm going to create the jog using a base flange tab so i'm going to create this geometry here and then i'm going to extrude that as a, a thin feature or as a base flange tab and then i'll create all the jog geometry and that'll set me up with some geometry that i can actually pattern around this model so I think this is gonna work out. Let's give it a try together. Let's see how it goes. I'm already two minutes into the, ch the challenge, but I think it's always important for anybody who's trying to learn sheet metal to get in the habit of coming up with a game plan before you actually get started. So if you agree, if you think it's good and it's important to do that, hit the like button on this video. Let me know down in the comments what you're learning from these videos and let's get into it here with this sheet metal challenge. So let's move this over to our second screen. Let's begin a new part. Actually, let's turn on our, our keyboard cam here. Let's begin a new part. So we go new. This is gonna use uh, plain carbon steel and MMGS. So I'm gonna use my template to save a little bit of time here. We're gonna go right plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, and we're gonna sketch those two lines that we talked about in the beginning. So this first line is gonna come over to a distance of 250, 
And then the second line here is going to come up to a height of 33. And we're going to also create a center line. So you can hit escape center line, just a vertical center line here coming off the origin. And then one final dimension from the origin to this point. This is going to be that large radius in the front of the part. So that's going to have a radius of 100. So this is what your very first sketch should look like if you're following along with just these two lines, the center line and these three dimensions here. And then we are going to jump into the sheet metal command, sheet metal base flange slash tab. Now, when you define a sheet metal, what you're doing, should, I should say, when you define a base flange tab, what you're doing is you're taking your lines and you're performing a thin feature extrusion. So you can see here that we're taking those two lines and we're doing a thin feature extrusion. So the parameters that you're going to input are going to be the sheet metal wall thickness and the sheet metal bend radius. And these are shown on the drawing, five millimeters and eight millimeters for the inside bend. You're also going to specify which direction that thin feature is taking place relative to the original sketch lines. So is it going to the inside or to the outside of those original sketch lines. It's going to the inside for this design. And then finally, we need to define what the depth of this extrusion is. And so we're only gonna do half the model, so it's gonna be 100 since the total model is 200 wide, but we're not just gonna type 100, we're gonna type 100 minus the 38 millimeters for that uh, lug that's kind of sticking out the back of the part, minus the 12 millimeters for that bend relief. It's got a radius of six, so it's got a 12 millimeter gap there for that bend relief. So you can see there that, that sheet metal is gonna come out to a depth of 50 millimeters and we press enter, enter, and there is our first sheet metal feature. So now for our second feature, we're gonna select this face here, begin a sketch, orient our view, and we're gonna create a sketch of a line that comes over this way, a line that comes up this way, without clicking anything. So you know, you get to click there to define that, that uh, second endpoint. And then without clicking anything, you're gonna take your mouse here and you're gonna just hold your mouse over that endpoint and then come off of that endpoint with a tangent arc. And then at this point, you can type in the radius 19 enter if you're using auto dimensioning. And then you can see you can move around here to exactly 180 degrees. So you're exactly in line with where you started. Single left click, move your mouse straight down here, make a vertical line. Come back, don't don't click anything after you click that end point, don't click anything. Hold your mouse over this end point, come off of that with another tangent arc. <clears throat> come over here to exactly 180 degrees, single click on this edge here, and then close this thing off. And that is your second sketch. Now, at this point, we can also add a hole, so S key circle, add a hole here. This is gonna have a diameter of 16. And then we can S key smart dimension and start adding in our final dimensions. So this is gonna have a, a gap here of 12. You can see that in the top view for that bend relief. We're gonna have a distance here from the origin, a distance from the origin to this hole here in that tab that's sticking out the back. And that distance is gonna be 174. And then finally, a distance here from this back edge of the part to the top of this arc, the tangency point. So you hold shift on your keyboard and pick that tangency point of the arc. And then what you can do is you can click in the background and make that distance 25. And so this is what your second sketch should look like. If you're following along with this video, this tutorial, this is what you want your second sketch to look like. And once you got your sketch looking like that, you can choose the command sheet metal base flange tab. And what this will do is it'll take that sketch and just extrude it the same width as the sheet metal and merge it to the sheet metal. So now that we've got those two features in place, we're ready to mirror this thing. And a little trick for mirroring is if you pick a planar face off the model, and then if you pick the body from the, the cut list over here, so you hold control and you pick the body from the cut list, then what you could do is you could choose features mirror. And look at that. SolidWorks automatically puts the body into the correct bay. So we didn't have to you know, collapse and expand and deal with all this, this junk here. It just automatically put that body in there. We hit the green check mark and look at that. We mirrored that sheet metal. It's still sheet metal. It can still be flattened, but it gave us just what we wanted. So now we're gonna perform a fillet command and that fillet command is gonna be what's called a full round fillet. So when you launch the fillet feature, you've got these different options across the top here, constant size, variable, face fillet, and then full round fillet. And with full round fillet, what you do is you pick this face here, which is gonna be maintained. You pick this face here, which is gonna be eliminated. And you pick this face over here, which is gonna be maintained. And what SolidWorks does is it takes that face that's gonna be eliminated and replaces it with a tangent arc. So tangent, 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 full round fillet. Hit the green check mark. There we go. We're done with that feature. 
pick this face here, begin a sketch S key circle, and we're gonna create a circle here right on that top face with a diameter of 160, enter, S key, extrude cut, and we're gonna use this sheet metal option over here, link to thickness. Link to thickness, really cool sheet metal option to make sure that that cut always has the same depth as the wall thickness of the sheet metal. So now we are at the tricky part of this model, and the tricky part of this model is creating that jog in a way that it can be patterned. And what we're gonna do is instead of making a jog, we're gonna make this as a multi-body sheet metal by making a new base flange. So to help set ourselves up for success here, we're actually gonna go back to the original sketch, this original base flange and the sketch one here in that very first base flange. And we're gonna edit this sketch and just add a, a few more pieces of geometry. Basically, we're just gonna add a vertical center line. So this vertical center line is gonna have a height of 33. And this vertical center line is gonna be dimensioned to our original center line here with a diameter dimension. Now to accomplish this, let me get normal two here. To accomplish this, what you wanna do is make sure that you dimension to either this end point or this end point and dimension to this center line. But don't dimension to this line, only pick one of the end points. So this one, I'm gonna pick the bottom one. And then I'm gonna pick this center line. And so what that lets me do is it lets me pick this point, pick this line, cross over the line before I drop the dimension and then get that nice doubled dimension, which is gonna be 75. And so what this, this line now represents is it represents, let me, here, let me exit the sketch. Let me show, show that sketch. What that, that line represents is it represents the center of the, the jog and of this hole here. So the jog is gonna come over and down and back over. It's gonna come over and down and back over. So the, the very center of that hole and the very center of that arc on the jog, that's what this point right here now represents. And that's just gonna make it easier for us to lay out the rest of the jog. So sometimes when I create layout geometry, whether it's part of another feature or just its own standalone sketch, I like to right mouse button on that sketch and show it. But I also like to right mouse button and say, sketch color. And when I choose sketch color here, I can make this like a magenta color, something that'll really pop out and be easy to reference when we go to make this base flange tab. So now I'm gonna go to the right plane, begin a sketch, orient my view, and I'm gonna create the geometry for that base flange tab. So a line here comes over, comes up, comes over, something like that. I'm gonna hit escape. This line here is gonna have a relationship to this point of coincident, not midpoint, but coincident. The distance from the center of the, the hole to the peak of the, the jog uh, tab, the, the arc on the jog, that distance is gonna be whatever the radius is. So that's 13, so 26 over two or 13, radius 13. And then the, um, the, the um, angle of this jog, so if I pick this line here and I pick the jog, the angle of that jog is going to be 75. So this jog is pretty close to being defined. The one last thing is that there's a dimension from this vertical edge here to the start of the tangency point of the bend. Now that's not gonna be this point here. We need to establish the start of the tangency point for that bend. So there's a couple ways you can do this, but I think probably the easiest way is just to add a fillet in there. You know, when you're making a base flange tab, the, the flange is gonna take on whatever radius pre-exists in the geometry. So for example, if I put a radius here of 12 and then I pick on this edge here and I hit the green check mark and then I choose to make a base flange tab, well, SolidWorks is gonna automatically create a radius of eight on the inside of this bend, and then it's gonna maintain whatever radius we sketched in there for this bend. So if I go features, base flange, tab, you see how what SolidWorks did was it, it used the default radius here, it used my user-defined radius here. So th that what that means is that we can, we can choose to make this a value of eight millimeters, because that's the default inside bend radius, and then we can choose to add in that dimension. So the dimension from this edge here to this point is a dimension of 76 and SolidWorks is going to automatically use an inside bend radius of eight there when we jump into our base flange tab command. So the only piece of loose geometry that's left on this sketch is this line here. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just make kind of like a do nothing dimension. So I'll just drop in a dimension here, maybe 10 millimeters. It just needs to be enough to clear that gap. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll add an annotation to that, uh, to that dimension. So maybe I'll say like 10, um, ignore something like that. You could also say that you could right mouse button on that dimension and you could say 
don't mark this dimension for the drawing so you can uncheck that option and what that does is when you use the command insert model items that dimension won't be brought in if you try to bring in your dimensions from the model so here's one last look at what that sketch should look like. If you're following along with, this is what that sketch should look like. And once you've got that geometry in place, you can jump into the command sheet metal base flange tab. And when we jump into the command sheet metal base flange tab, we're gonna reverse the direction, reverse the direction so that the material is going down into the part. I want this to be going down and into the part. Here you see that inside bend radius of eight. Here we see this was sharp, but now it's taking on an inside bend radius of eight. So that's looking pretty good. And uh, then what we could do is we could choose a direction one mid-plane extrusion out to a depth of whatever the width of that tab is, 26. Enter, enter. And now we've got a sheet metal multi-body design. Here's our first body and here is our second body. So let's make some final changes to the second body. We're gonna do the um, uh, fillet command. We're gonna do the full round fillet again. So this face here, come over here, this face here come over here this face here we get rid of that internal face with that full round fillet hit the green check mark pick this face begin a sketch s key circle this is going to be the hole that's running through that jog and that hole is going to be at a diameter of 15 s key extrude cut and we'll do link to thickness once again and there we go and now we can jump into the command features circular pattern and for our direction, we can choose this edge here of that 160 hole that we punch through. And then for our bodies, we can choose this body here, the jog. And you can see here that with SolidWorks sheet metal or with SolidWorks in general, we can create a body pattern with much less resistance than when we try to create a feature pattern. If this was a jog and we tried to feature pattern it, it doesn't work. SolidWorks blocks us for some reason. But if we do it as a body pattern, boom, there we go. We created a body of that. This is also nice because if it's a body pattern, you could edit the feature and maybe reduce the number of jogs or increase the number of jogs. Although if you increase, you run into a problem with the flat pattern overlapping. But you could reduce the number of jogs really easily. Hit the green check mark. And now we need to take all five of these bodies and bring them back together. And the way that I do that is I pick the first body, then I hold shift and I pick the last body, and then I let go of shift, and I right mouse button, and I say combine. And once I choose combine here, you can see that I can hit the green check mark, and boom, now we're all combined together in one body. I can go to sheet metal, and I can choose flatten, and there we see that it does give me a flat pattern, and I can look at the sensor here, control Q to update that sensor, and 1420 grams. And so now if I go back to the YouTube practice models challenge, I can see I just ran out of time. I literally just ran out of time. Let me just back this up like uh, 30 seconds. See here we were at the end of the video. And uh, there we go. The correct answer to this one is 1420 grams. So I would go down into the comments and I would add a comment saying, I got it, got it in SolidWorks, but I just ran out of time, just went a little bit over time on this one. This is a tough one, guys. This is not an easy model. If you're able to get through this, whether it's you know through following this tutorial or on your own, you should give yourself a huge pat on the back regardless of how long it took, because this is not an easy challenge. Mm -hmm. But that is the answer to that question of can we do it and can we pattern the jog? Not using a jog command, but you could do it as multi-body sheet metal and then you can pattern that around. And uh, that is your sheet metal tutorial on this 24-11-12 riser pad. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, leave me a comment down below. And if you wanna learn more about sheet metal, be sure to look at the details down below about our upcoming sheet metal training class. And I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next tutorial.